most thrilling and exciting and challenging and heartwarming mission that I ever flew, where an even greater team effort resulted in a much greater victory. And it was the rescue of Roger Locker, L-O-C-H-E-R, Roger Locker. We shot down on the 10th of May in 1972, and for 22 days there was no word. We carry survival radios right here in our survival vest, one on each side, lots of extra batteries, because there's no way to make that, that rescue without the communication link. Proper communication, as you well know, is so important in every single thing that we do, every day, all day long, isn't it? Think about the problems caused cause the time, the money, the effort, the resources wasted by miscommunication. It is absolutely unbelievable. We went back in that afternoon and called and called on the radio and there was no answer. Went in for days thereafter, never any reply. We finally decided that he, he must have been killed or captured. Yet he never came out on a captured list that the North Vietnamese like to publish every few days. Well, 22 days later, we were flying in the same area. There's a break in the radio chatter. You can imagine with 20 or 30 airplanes all on the same frequency, all trying to talk at the same time, particularly when they're shooting at you. It does get a little busy, would you, would you imagine? I have a few seconds of tape to give you a feel for what it sounds like under those conditions. That last transmission, this is T-Ball on guard. Be advised we have blue bandits crossing into Laos at this time. All aircraft heads up. They should be high altitude. Blue bandit being a MiG-21. Anyone understand that? Right. Let me play that last segment over. Listen very carefully. See if you can hear some of the words. This is T-Ball on guard. Be advised we have blue bandits crossing into Laos at this time. All aircraft heads up. They should be high altitude. Anybody hear it? Huh? Huh? It's kind of like another language, isn't it? Points out the importance of understanding the language of your business. Every business, every organization, every activity, every specialty has a language of its own, right? We have a bunch of attorneys in here. You never can figure out what those people are talking about. Not only do we need to understand the language of our business, but the language of those with whom we do business. If we're gonna do it rapidly, efficiently, and effectively. Anyway, breaking the radio chatter. Call came over the air. Any Allied aircraft? This is Orster, 01 Bravo. I remember thinking, Orster, we, we don't have an Orster call sign today. And then we realized that's, that's Roger Locker. We answered him. This is exactly what he said. He said, guys, I've been down here a long time. Any chance of picking me up? <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? I don't know if I'd have been that cool after 22 days. He said, you bet. You bet. Went back to our respective bases that afternoon, quickly planned a rescue mission. We came back in. He was five miles off the end of Yen by airfield some 60 miles northwest of Hanoi, the deepest rescue ever attempted. But the ground fire from around Yen Bai was so heavy that we had to back off. We couldn't get him out. Went home that night, as you can imagine, we're pretty, pretty down, pretty frustrated. This is our friend, someone most of us knew very well. He was on his third combat tour over 400 combat missions. Not only did we admire him and respect him greatly, but he was one of the neatest young men that many of us had ever met. Now we'd found him. After all this time, now we knew where he was and we couldn't, couldn't get him out. And of course, now they knew where he was. Very soon he would be captured. Well, the next morning, and one of the great examples, in my opinion, of courageous leadership, General John Vogt, VOGT, the four-star commander of 7th Air Force in Saigon, canceled the entire strike mission to Hanoi and dedicated over 150 airplanes to the rescue of Roger Locker. 
And we went in, and for about two hours, we made sure that the guns at Yen Bay Airfield were silenced. Then a young 27-year-old Air Force Academy graduate, Captain Dale Stovall, class of 67, commanded the lead of two Jolly Green Giant helicopters. And Mike, I'm always so proud to tell this story because you see, Dale was a freshman when I was a senior. I had a little bit to do with his summer training his first year. <laughs> Dale commanded the lead of those two Jolly Greens, came in the PJ, sent the jungle penetrator down through a heavy canopy of trees and snatched Roger Locker as he was about to be captured. Selected full power, pulled him out of the jungle into the helicopter, they headed out. We flew cover for the two Jolly Greens and their C-130 refueling tankers as they made their way out of North Vietnam. Brought him all the way back to Udar in Thailand. General Vogt flew up in a T-39 from Saigon. It was the first of several hundred of us to meet him as he stepped off that chopper after 23 days. The flight surgeons, the doctors, the nurses, the medics, the chaplains, quickly took him off to the hospital. But they did say he could come to the club that night. <laughs> 1900 hours, 7 p.m. for 30 minutes. And the word spread. And the club was absolutely, totally jam-packed. And at 7 p.m., Roger Locker washed, fed, shaven, and dressed in a uniform that we used to call our party suit, walked in the front door. Applause broke out. It lasted for over 20 minutes as he made his way through the crowd, shaking hands with friends. A magnificent experience of human emotion, an incredible victory against all odds, a total force joint rescue victory against all odds with no losses. And when we think about that and analyze it and compare it, say, to the theme of that movie Platoon, which suggested that we shoot each other in the back. And then we come to fully understand the effort to which we will go, the resources we will commit, the risk, the risk that we will take to rescue one crew member, one American, one ally. Isn't it a pretty powerful statement about who we are, about the value that we place on life, on freedom, and on the individual? and about the marketplace in which we all operate, which is defined by tremendous respect for the individual and for economic freedom. Of course, as you well know, without economic freedom, we ultimately lose all other freedoms. You see, this is a big part of what I believe it's about. The real mission, yours and mine, business, government, civilian, military, is to protect and preserve an environment, a climate, a system, a way of life, where people can be free to reach their full potential. As our friends in the Army like to say, be all that they can be.